life, sex, goals, and oh, hell no, this is Midlife Craving. It's the end of an era, the end of my 60-day no-D diet. Welcome to this bonus episode where I'm going to summarize everything I've learned, talk about a whole lot that I lost, and share so much that I have gained over the last 60 days. Let's get it on, Cravers. So it's official. I survived. I did it. I completed the 60-day no-D diet. And to be honest, it's showing. At this point, I'm starting to lose hearing in my left eye and taste in my right. But hey, I made it. And that's really all that matters. It's been quite the journey, and I'm excited to share it with you all. I already know what you're thinking. So Adrian, did you get it in yet? Are you back? How was it? Did you destroy someone's soul? Some guy out there in ICU needing fluids? <laughs> And the answer is no. God, why? Right? But listen, the 60 day no D diet was really just a mental pause for me to take a challenge to help me heal. It was changing the way that I usually respond after a breakup, which is hurry and get under someone else or distract myself from some serious healing that really needed to take place. It's not like when the 60 day mark hit, like some guy popped out of a cake and was like, congratulations, let's bang. (laughs) God, I wish. Oh my God. For some reason that reminds me of this guy. So I was at a bar with some friends and he was across the table from me and he texted me and said, this is the text trying to bang. I mean, Jesus Christ, get a better pickup line, dude. Spoiler alert. He did not get my pee. You got to have a little bit more game than that, buddy. Anyway, so I want to say that oddly enough too, the diet really made me like cycle down. It made me stop putting so much emphasis on the physical aspect of things. Listen, I'm still a nympho. Like the drive is still there, no doubt, but my priorities are just more straight now. Also, I'm picky as fuck and I have a busy ass schedule. I'm not taking time away from my girl, nor time away from my work. So combine all of that and it makes getting it in tough. However, I will say I may or may not have some plans with Baywatch next week. You're going to have to stay tuned to find out. Before we get into what I've learned, what I've lost and the best for last, what I've gained over the last 60 days, I want to discuss a show that I highly recommend all of you watch. It's called Sex Life on Netflix. It's so funny because one of my listeners actually turned me on to this because episode three, around 19 minutes, 40 seconds, there is this scene, no, a shot of holy fucking shit, the most beautiful, oh my God, my mouth is watering, the most beautiful, perfect cock. Uh, I mean, I, it's it's a rare thing that I, when I see something like this and it takes my breath away, okay? Like, like I said, my mouth is watering. I'm starting to like mix up my words. But talk about a shower and a grower. Listen, if you do anything to start there first, <laughs> amen. And by the way, I applaud this show for finally showing cock. You know, finally showing more of men, their bodies, them eating pussy and stuff. Because there's a serious lack of that. And lastly, shout out to my listener. You know who you are for turning me on to that. Um, You guys really know me so well. It's it's fucking awesome. Anyway, now that I'm all distracted by that perfect fucking huge D. uh, Okay, so sex life isn't just about sex life. I mean, kind of it is, but it's also like sex versus life. I have to say, I have never found a show to be more relatable. I don't want to give away too many spoilers, but it basically shows the struggle of a woman of who I would like to call. She's going through some midlife shit, you know, and she's craving more. No doubt. She talks about how will you settle down, get married, have babies, and then you wake up like, what the fuck? I mean, that sounds fucking familiar. She says at one point, she says, my life doesn't make sense right now. And I was like, wow, I can really relate to that statement. She talks about how 85% of her life, she has it all. The loving husband, beautiful kids, big house, blah, blah. And it's missing that 15% hot sex life that she is craving so bad. I mean, that's really fucking relatable to me. She finds herself missing her old self and the sexual prowess that she used to be. And she starts thinking about her ex-boyfriend. Actually, she cannot stop thinking about him. And he was the best sex she's ever had. By the way, let me tell you, the way that they fuck. Oh, God, do I understand that? 
I too want that 15%. No, I have to have that 15%. I think to myself how lucky I am that I have even had that hot, passionate, mind-blowing, dominant fucking sex with two partners in my life. Because I mean, it's a rare thing. And I think about how many people out there have never even tasted that before, how they probably can't relate. And God, that makes me so sad. I hope each and every one of you have had that before. By the way, if you watch the show, and you cannot relate to that burning desire, the relentless hunger, the mind numbing and reckless thirst for another human, I implore you to get out there and get you some. Now, I'm not suggesting, you know, oh, go leave your husband or, you know, leave your spouse or partner. God, I mean, whatever. But I'm just saying, like, if you ain't ever had it like that, you you are fucking missing out. You know, it's a great show. Hot sex scenes, eye-opening dialogue, and it keeps it really real for the struggle that is this time of life. And I really applaud that show for it. While watching, I kept thinking, like, this is why I started Midlife Graving. This exact reason right here. And after you watch it, especially after you see that big ass D, you know, reach out to me and hit me up in my DMs and let me know what you think. By the way, there's this one scene where she's fucking her husband and he's distracted by the Monday night football game. And so she's finally just like, get the vibrator. She gets it and then it slowly dies. And it made me think of that day when I was in the shower with Rosie and she like puttered out. I mean, it's fucking tragic. (laughs) You know, I'm excited because this week my admin Eve order will be here. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at Midlife Craving because I'm going to show you everything I got. I'm really excited because I got myself some Benoit balls. Hey, Lauren from episode four. (laughs) Shout out to you, girl. You know, she's the one who originally turned me on to them. And I'm really excited to try them out. Everything I got is from adamandeve.com. And I'm happy to share that I have an amazing deal with them right now. Use the code CRAVERS, C-R-A-V-E-R-S, and get 50% off almost any one item, three free gifts, access to six movies, and free shipping. Again, that's code CRAVERS, C-R-A-V-E-R-S at adamandeve.com. And do me a favor, hit me up on Instagram at Midlife Craving and show me what you got. You know, maybe I'll be enticed to buy something else and add it to my (laughs) arsenal that is ever growing upstairs. So one of the things the main character in the show says is, my whole life I've had the notion, wanting to have it all was asking too much. Turns out having it all is a myth. And I'm like, God damn it. Like, is that true? Do you have to sacrifice the 15% for the 85? Like, what kind of shitty fucking ratio is that anyway? I mean, I I want it all. I do. I want 100%. I mean, does that make me sound crazy? (laughs) You know, one thing is for sure is I'm on the hunt for that. And I'm going to take you guys along with me. Mm, Lucky you. Okay, so let's talk about what I've learned on the 60 day no D diet. First and foremost is to stop looking for happiness in the same place where I lost it. Man, did that I heard that quote, and it really hit me hard. When I look in the mirror, like Uncle Mo tells me to do, you know, I saw I was not happy. And I had lost the happiness in myself. Yet I was going back to places where I lost it and still looking for it. And that vicious cycle got me. I learned three key words during this time. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is what you have going on in your life, what you have bringing you happiness and how you feel about it all. It takes a lot for a codependent person like me to shift to that, but I'm working on it and it's starting to really work for me. By the way, this most importantly includes what others may think, how others may feel about all of your personal growth and change or new things that you're doing. Hi, haters. (laughs) And those three simple words really count here. It doesn't matter. You know, I think of that like famous quote by Dr. Seuss, and he says, be who you are and say what you feel, because those who mind don't matter. And those who matter don't mind. You know, another thing I've learned during this 60 day no D diet is that pain is fertile ground for radical change. It doesn't mean automatic change for the good, like you have to choose that, but the pain is what makes you grow and makes you change. I really feel that, you know, 
I need to tell you about like what I call the grand finale of Prince Charming and I's relationship. I was st- stupidly hanging on, you know, he was in my daughter's life and I was going through some serious pain because like he was in denial and I think truly felt that like we were going to get back together. And it's really easy to look back at the good. You know, I've discussed this in episodes before. And I mean, honestly, like, <laughs> I don't blame him. You know, he thought we were going to get back together. That is how it's been like the last 838 times. (laughs) But I went to dinner with him a few weeks ago. And the moment we got to the restaurant, I knew it was a mistake. My heart was hurting so bad because no matter how hard I tried, no matter how bad I wanted that love to come back and I wanted to feel that comfort, I knew it was over. You know, dinner was fine. But when he left, I legit broke down. (laughs) I am... I'm not embarrassed to say this. I cried for about 30 minutes on my laundry room floor, like the ugly fucking cry. I peeled myself up off that floor and then cried my ass off in the shower. Finally, I went to bed and cried myself to sleep. I mean, I remember like I'm the girl that does not cry. Like I fucking hate crying, but I truly knew that I had to feel to heal and that ultimately I was going to glow through what I was going through. I sound so cheesy, but I finally let myself mourn it, you know, once and for all. And since then, I've been much better. The last thing I really learned on this diet is that you have to close the door. You cannot leave a foot in it. You also cannot leave a window cracked. And by closing the door, it means you have to block them. Now, listen, this goes against Anything, I honestly have never blocked anyone before. Um, This is new territory for me. Usually, you know, I made a TikTok about this. I'll save their number on my phone as like, never answer. And then I'll have another one, never, ever answer. And then like, fucking asshole, dickhead, like whatever. But so, you know, blocking is not my thing. It doesn't feel good blocking someone. You know, I feel like I've ghosted them. But what did I say above? You know, it doesn't matter. This is about me and my healing not them. Blocking and making a clean break is the only way to truly move forward. It's really the only way to truly break that cycle and stop that cycle. At first, I mean, it's shocking and, you know, the guilt is there, but then you start to feel the freedom and it gets to a point where you don't even realize or remember that they should be texting you. They should be making you think about them. And this is all for the better, you know, for every party involved. All right. I'm now ready to talk about what I've lost. And to be honest with you, this was one of the most eye opening, most shocking things about doing this 60 day no D diet. It's important to share that the hardest part of growth is losing people on your journey. I feel like I've lost so much in the last 60 days. And I guess that's expected when you get out of a long term relationship. But I've had so much change and so much growth. It's been really surprising with how much I've lost. I saw this quote, I'd rather be hurt by your absence than frustrated by your presence. And that really resonates with me. You know, the breakup with Prince Charming has been brutal. There's no denying that his amazing group of friends had truly become my family. I have to say, I felt so lucky to have all of them in my life. And it's it's not like they're going anywhere. And many of them I still talk to, of course. But, you know, it's different. I'm not at the parties. I'm not in the group texts anymore. And if you're one of those friends listening to me right now, please know that I love you. I hope that we are always in each other's lives. And thank you from the bottom of my heart for so effortlessly letting me in your family. I miss you all dearly. And for all the girls, you know, let's plan a damn day at my pool where we can have so much fun and shotgun beers and then get kicked out. I mean, you know, like, let's make that fucking happen. I also want to say that, you know, I will always love Prince Charming. He will always have a piece of my heart. But I also know that you can love someone and still say goodbye to them if that's what's best for you. I think the most surprising loss over the last 60 days has been individuals who I thought were my true friends, and then it turned out that they really weren't. You know, we talked a lot about friends on the show, and damn it, like, I find myself having to reevaluate my inner circle of friends. I know that change makes people uncomfortable and I can usually spot, you know, frenemies or people that are trying to use me. But what's really hard to accept is that even when you love and invest in someone, you know, they can still shock and disappoint you. But what I know is that 99.9% of the time that has to do with the individual and their own insecurities. 
when you start making decisions that others cannot fathom, when you start breaking cycles, patterns, and molds that others cannot do for themselves, it brings out their own insecurities and flaws you know, to the surface, and it can end up and really causing a termination of your friendship. I've also noticed that when you stop calling, stop making the effort, stop fueling all the energy and entertainment, you can take a moment to look around and then see like, you know, who's left. It's very eye opening to say the least. While I'm on this whole train of thought, I want to give a big shout out to some of my amazing friends, Katina, Zach, Uncle Mo, Carissa, many more of you, but you know, the roots that are building me up and loving me for my authentic self. Thank you. I talk a lot about the last year and a half of my life. It has been chaotic to say the least. When I look around compared to the person I was then, everything is completely different. I feel like I lost the person who I was then too. But here, that's a good thing. I am stronger. I'm recognizing my worth and my core values are now completely aligned with the direction that I am moving in. None of this loss signifies an ending to me, by the way. You know, to me, I'm one month away from turning 40. This is just the fucking beginning. Finally, let's get to the good shit, all that I have gained on the 60-day no-D diet. When I think of any losses that I've had lately, I am like immediately reminded of how much I have gained. And the most important thing that I have gained for myself is my personal peace. Over the last 60 days, I have had incredible focus. I mean, I've been kicking ass and taking names when it comes to being a mother, my job, my show, my workouts, cultivating my friendships. The clarity has brought so much fucking efficiency. I mean, for real, I am thriving, baby. (laughs) When you begin to say, you know, I love myself more, amazing things start to happen. I'm a giver, and that's a huge bonus to me in the bedroom. Mm, Believe me. (laughs) But in interpersonal relationships, it deters me. I give and give and give and give, and then I'm burned out. I've done this my entire life, and that's a huge thing I've learned lately. You know, love myself first, and then the rest will fall into place. I can say that when someone hurts you, you can become wounded or you can become wise, and I choose the latter. You learn to move different when you're tired of getting your feelings hurt, and that's a whole lot of what I'm doing right now, moving differently. You've got to choose yourself or lose yourself. you got to be loyal to yourself. Realize that you aren't at the top of anyone else's priority list. So you damn straight better hold that top spot on yours for yourself. I know it seems like a whole lot that I learned on the 60 day no D diet is to be selfish. And you know what? Like you're goddamn right. My new motto is what's in it for me. Like me and BBD said on the last episode, you know, I want to be that right front burner on someone's stove. Like fuck anything else. If you're stuck If you're dating and you're sick of being hurt, I dare you. I feel like I want to be like, I double dog dare you. I dare you to try this 60 day no D diet and see what you learn, see what you lose, and then ultimately what you gain from it. I mean, you really have nothing else to lose other than investing in yourself. And if you're like me, it's about damn time. Also, I just want to say, and I I talk a lot about the D and the D diet. This also applies for the V, you know, you know, men, you can go on a no 60 day, no V diet and find the same clarity for yourself. All right. So let me get to it. Do I miss the D? Fuck. Yes, I do. Have I jerked off more in the last 60 days than anyone would think is possible? Mm, Yup. I mean, thank God for adamandeve.com. You know, use my code CRAVERS, C-R-A-V-E-R-S, and get yourself some. It'll keep you busy and out of trouble. Can I not wait to kiss passionately to feel those first few slow, deep thrusts? Oh, God. My mouth is watering. I'm like panting like a dog. (laughs) Can I not wait to have a face buried between my thighs? Oh, choke on a huge cock, feel that after sex glow and have my hair looking like a fucking singer from White Snake. Abso-fucking-lutely. But it's all going to be in good time. Like I said, we'll see what happens. And yeah, you know, of course, I'm going to kiss and tell. Okay, Cravers, I've got a few updates. Friday, July 30th is going to be my 18th and final episode of the season. I just, when I even say that number, I'm just like, wow, it's been 18 episodes already. Like, I can't believe it. 
But I will be back Friday, September 10th for season two. And it you just wait. It's going to be some next level shit. I'm already working on the episode lineups and it's going to be really exciting. I am really excited for season two. Before I go, I just want to say thank you for all of the love and support, especially over the last 60 days. I've had so many funny comments, great conversations, amazing feedback, lots of love, lots of support. And thank you so much, Cravers, from the bottom of my heart. It means so much to me. So next Friday, I'm back with my little firecracker, Carissa. And oh shit, do we have some stories to share. Dating disasters, sex shenanigans, including a murder hornet. (laughs) I feel like I want to say, can I get a ho yeah, ho yeah. (laughs) Get ready, cravers. I'll see you next Friday. Ho yeah.